Hello USC football fans, Connor Morissette and Shotgun Spratling. We're here on campus after day two of spring practice. Shotgun, let's start with spring practice observations. We saw Lincoln Riley getting involved with some drills today, hitting the quarterbacks with a pad, and they were working on some ball security. DeCarlos Nicholson made a big play. Take us through that drill. Yeah, we saw a drill where the quarterbacks throw in some short passes. They were getting roughed up by, you know, some some interns, some, you know, coaching interns like Lincoln Riley, you know, <laughs> uh, you had some – uh, helpers doing a little bit of everything, Lincoln Riley being involved, of course. So they're working on feeling contact. And then you have wide receivers working on getting separation, coming back to the ball, and catching. It's just a real quick, short throw. Nothing you know important about the throw and catch. But then the DB is right on top of you. So can you hold on to the ball with the DB right on your back and then try to turn up field, get up field, and then there's a, another DB that is running to a cone far away and then coming to work on a pursuit angle. So you're working – Three different positions at three different with three different things. So a really fun drill, um, and you know the trail defenders trying to knock the ball away. We did see the Carlos Nicholson knock one away from Makai Lemon uh, with Prophet Brown right there, ready to kind of scoop it up. Um, and then we saw some some guys you know getting getting physical a little bit, and they were telling the DBs you know no hands on, keep your hands off type of thing. So working on being able to to be physical without grabbing at the same time. So uh, so it was a fun drill, and it was right in front of us, so we got to see that a little. bit. Bit. Uh, Deuce Robinson was out there today, you know, was not participating with baseball today because they did not play today. So back with football, you're going to see him, the, the DB's trying to trying to get on, on his back and stuff, and he's a, he's a big load. So uh, it was fun to see him out there as well as Xavier Jordan, uh, his first time, my first time seeing him in the USC uniform as well. Yeah, that was really cool to see. And then after that, they got into some defensive pursuit drills. So it's March. It's too early probably to take away who's going to play based on that. But we did see nine guys suit up, and it was Jamil Muhammad and Anthony Lucas as the defensive linemen, Mason Cobb and Easton Mascarenas Arnold as the linebackers, Jacoby Covington to Carlos Nicholson at corner, Jalen Smith, Bryson Shaw, and Achille Arnold at safety. What do you make of that grouping, and is it too early to take away stuff from there? Am I, am I reading too much into that? Can we not? Just What are your thoughts on defensive pursuit drills? We can get into the second and third team as well, but uh, that was the first team group. Um, my takeaway is that doesn't matter at all. Okay. What the, what's today? What did you say? March twenty yeah. first. Yeah. Uh, what when is the first game? Is it March twenty second? <laughs> no, then I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, you know, the first guys to get in there, um, you, you know, and it's a pursuit trail. It's everyone's going to get their chance. It's not like there's a first team and they're the only ones getting reps. Everyone's getting reps, so it's just getting guys in there and getting their opportunity. So I'm not going to make too much of it on day two. No pads on yet, no anything like that. So uh, not, not too much to take away from me. I, I agree. Just to fill people in, second team, Braylon Shelby, Sam Green on the defensive line, Rajon Davis, Eric Gentry at linebacker, John Humphrey, Prophet Brown at cornerback, Traquan Fagans, Kamari Ramsey, and Anthony Beavers were at safety. One other thing, on Tuesday, Zachariah Branch was the only one fielding punts today. Makai Lemon joined him. Woody Marks and Quentin Joyner were on the other side of the field doing kickoffs. Zachariah Branch is going to return the punts, but it looks like Makai Lemon would probably be up next. That makes a lot of sense. After practice, we heard from Lincoln Riley, a bunch of players, Danton Lynn. It was defense today. And the big talking point was everyone just beefing up, adding a lot of weight. You talked to Bryson Shaw, too, but just overall, what were your takeaways from Coach Riley and some of the guys who are just trying to beef up right now? Well, I know you guys talked a lot about, uh, you know, the tunnel watch, you know, first practice, uh, getting to see the guys on Tuesday. This is my first time getting to see them. And didn't necessarily think, you know, I do see some players, and you see, okay, that guy's definitely gotten bigger, this guy's gotten bigger. But it took me when Braylon Shelby was standing beside us because they're in spiders, which are these small padded, pads that, that go on their shoulders that aren't shoulder pads at all. I'm used to seeing Braylon Shelby from game days when I come out and seeing him in full pads, and he looked very similar to what he looked like in full pads, just as far as the width of his shoulders, the, the breadth of his shoulders, I guess, um, the thickness of his chest and everything, and that's with these thin spiders on. So that shows me how much bigger he's gotten there. Uh, he said that he's gained about 20 pounds, around 20 pounds, said he still wants to get, gain some more. He walked us through his, his morning yeah. routine of what he eats. He said, uh, you know, a five egg scramble? Good start to the day, right? Okay, well, we gotta have some waffles with it. We gotta have some yogurt parfait. We gotta have some fruit, some, you know, some Powerade. He's getting his, you know, everything in there in the morning. And that's to start with. So that's how these guys are gaining. But we have seen definitely there's much bigger bodies out there right now. And then I think you got the quote of the day from Jamil Muhammad talking about how it was an elephant in the room last year. Yeah, he mentioned, uh, he was asked by Luca Evans how philosophically 
different is just what happened last year to, to this year now with guys getting bigger. And he said, yeah, it was an elephant in the room last year. And the players weren't the only ones who knew it. Lincoln Riley knew it. The coaches knew it. They needed to be bigger last year. And Lincoln Riley, I think he mentioned philosophical change when we talked to him today about some of the offseason weight gain stuff. They are doing things totally different. The Alex Grinch speed defense is a thing of the past. They want bigger players. And that's really been the main takeaway I've had from the offseason even before Danton Lynn was hired, Lincoln Riley said, we got to get bigger. And then Danton Lynn's hired, and he said one of the goals is to get bigger. And that's just been a consistent theme, so I thought that was really interesting. But, yeah, Jamil Muhammad, a guy who was here last year, transfer, for him to return, to be in that locker room a year ago and to say what he said today, called it an elephant in the room, I thought that was really significant. You also talked to Bryson Shaw. What did he have to say today? Well, you talked about, I thought it was interesting, you know, because Denton Lynn's been working with the safeties, with the DBs a lot. He talked about, you know, we kind of getting his, picking his brain a little bit. What have you thought uh, of, you know, learning from him? He said he is such a great teacher. And he does, and kind of tried to get him to strap a little bit. He said, I don't think I can put it necessarily in words, but, you know, he just connects with everyone. And it, everyone is able to understand what he's teaching um, much quicker maybe than they have in the past. And he said the young guys have been able to, to learn really quickly. And so that's only going to accelerate what you can what you can put in as Denton Lynn. You know, Denton Lynn, when we talked to him today, he said, they already knew all the stuff we had today that we put in. Uh, you know, they put it in before they got on the field type of thing. The last week, he said they won't put in new stuff until next week when they're actually in full pads. But you're still learning that stuff. And, and so for them to be getting this base stuff in right now, and they've got some helpers, obviously, with Kamari Ramsey and John Humphrey back there. And, boy, does John Humphrey look so different. Now, I did see him at UCLA playing against USC he looks so different than the last time I really watched him in a game and really focused on him. It's not the blonde hair? No, the bl- he had the blonde hair no, back in his John Muir days as well. <laughs> but the last time I saw him is him and Kalen Bullock in the same secondary, and Kalen Bullock was uh, at practice today. But John Humphrey and Kalen Bullock both were probably 150, 160 pounds there. John Humphrey does not look 150 or 160 pounds anymore. Um, the, his legs are super thick. i uh, got a photo of him just getting down in his defensive stance to come up and make a tackle and just see the thickness of his legs. That's a guy who's really transformed over three years from the last time I really saw him. Now, that's a lot different than six months ago, but it definitely did stand out to me. And the blonde hair, you know, he, he definitely stands out in that way as well. But super long and Lincoln Riley talked about and Denton Lynn talked about how they wanted to get longer in the secondary. And someone like John Humphrey is definitely that, uh, is, is emblematic of that. Um, and then some of the young guys they brought in, to Carlos Nicholson, guys like that, that they brought in from the transfer portal as well. They really attacked that. They wanted length as well as physicality, though. And that was something that I, I thought was interesting because Lincoln Riley, they had guys like Kalen Bullock and they had guys that were long. But they didn't have the physicality, so uh, I think that was an element that they really wanted to add. And com- someone like Kamari Ramsey really adds that too. So him and John Humphrey helped the DBs, you know, have a little leg up because they've been in the defense before. Um, and and Bryson Shaw said, yeah, they're learning from those guys as well. Um, but the DB room combined, the safeties and cornerbacks, just looks really deep right now. Uh, and that's something you couldn't really say last year when they were trying to find guys to get consistent performance from. I thought the most interesting thing from Danton Lynn today was he said he's never coached someone like Eric Gentry, someone with that body type in the middle linebacker room, and not that he's afraid for the future. Gentry said he's really excited about coaching a guy like that, a guy who maybe doesn't look like every other middle linebacker. And we've talked a lot about Eric Gentry on the Peristyle podcast, on Tunnel Vision, on Instant Analysis. Looks like he's going to be in that middle linebacker role. Do you foresee Lynn, based on what he did last year at UCLA, trying to do anything different with Gentry? Where do you think he fits best on this defense? Well, you can play him as an inside linebacker. You can also play him in that Sam role that that they have that is going to be kind of a replacement for the nickel back. And uh, one of the things that Gerard Martinez really pointed out uh, on the the most recent two-star composite podcast I thought was interesting is he talked about how Danton Lynn really forced teams to adjust to their defense before they would make adjustments. So they weren't just going to, okay, you got three receivers, we have to get our nickel back on the field. They would play their base defense and try to match up with guy, with teams. And if they had to then make an adjustment, they would. But more often than not, they would use their base defense and something like that where maybe you want to get three linebackers out there and you use Eric Gentry in a, in a kind of a quasi nickelback slash outside linebacker role because he can cover you know, your tight ends. He can cover, and if you can cover slots well enough, and depending on if you're playing man zone, all those type of things, you could use him in that role. You can use him in an inside linebacker role. It, they, but I thought it was very interesting, like you said, that Denton Lynn said, never had anyone like it, but I'm excited. Yeah. 
And he said, now it's our job, talking about the coaching staff, to find a way to use him best. Not, this is a liability, ah, uh, what do I do with this guy? He's just different, I don't know what to do with him. It's, I mean, okay, what can I do? He's a toy, it's a, you know, a kid in a candy shop. It's a toy for him to play with. Now he's got to figure out what's the, exactly the best way to, to utilize Eric Gentry. And uh, Eric Gentry, talking about guys beefing up, I shook hands with him after practice. Uh, you know, I live outside Philly, he's from Philly, so we have that little bit of a connection there. So I chatted with him for just a second and uh, just, I can feel in his handshake the, the additional strength and just seeing his shoulders. The shoulders are an area where, you know, that I can definitely see it, that he's adding weight to and adding strength. So hopefully that helps him stay a little bit healthier this year as well, you know, taking on those hits as a 6'6 linebacker. Um, but he, he's a special player, and if he can be utilized in the right way, he can do special things. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they try to use him uh, in different ways, not just, hey, we got to stick him in this spot and see if he can fit. It's let's see how we can move him around and do different things. I asked Lincoln Riley about some of the early enrollee freshmen, and he said, I don't want to give any of them back, which got a big <laughs> laugh out of all of us. He, he, he's happy with all the, the freshmen so far. Specifically, he mentioned Marquis Gallegos. He really mentioned just about everyone. He he was really happy with, with a lot of the early enrollee freshmen so far. It's only been two practices, but he said it's a mature group. It's a, it's a group that, that he's really excited about. And I think to me, just watching a guy like Desmond Stevens, he was in the third team of the pursuit drill today. He's a guy who maybe he's not going to contribute a ton this year, but we talk all about bodies and, and guys beefing up. He's arrived on campus, and he looks like a, a, a Big Ten linebacker, in my opinion, so I'm excited about him. Any thoughts on the freshman from you? Yeah, Desmond Stevens definitely uh, was curious to see what his body type was, just because he was kind of a tweener in high school, and they you know, didn't know. We, I think we had him listed as an athlete. I think at one point he was listed as a wide receiver in our yeah, database. And, and does he look, am I off on that? Doesn't he look, look like a linebacker? Oh, no. He definitely does. He looks like a linebacker. Elijah Newby is another guy that I wanted to see how exactly he looked now. I was supposed to go see him last year, and unfortunately, they got a, their game got moved up a day, oh. which is a rarity uh, because of weather. In Connecticut's the weird with, with high school football. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, Northeast weather. Um, but uh, so I was excited to see him, and Lincoln Riley talked a little bit about him. He was asked about him, and he said that he reminds him of some of the linebackers he's had in the past, uh, and he mentioned Greenville. Yeah. Uh, he liked the, that he, he, Southern roots from uh, in, from East Carolina. He mentioned yeah. a linebacker yeah. there, but he talked about how. Elijah Newby is playing linebacker now, mm -hmm. but may not play linebacker in the future. He said he's fast, he's thick, and he's going to only add more weight. And so with the speed, power, and size combination he has, does he end up as a linebacker? Does he end up as somebody even off the edge? Or you can push him back and play safety. There's a lot of things that he could potentially do. So they're excited about oh, what, another toy that they can play with. And, you know, Denton Lynn talked about versatility and versatile guys and how much, you know, how important those guys are. I asked him about Jalen Smith. He um, said he's playing multiple positions right now. So um, I, I think that they're, they're really excited about some of those guys and someone like Elijah Newby who could play in different roles based on how his body kind of transforms during his time at USC and what kind of fits his play style best. You saw the guys walk out of the tunnel today for the first time. You watched 20 minutes of practice today for the first time this spring. You heard Lincoln Riley, Danton Lynn. Any final thoughts on everything from today? How great is it to see Solomon Tulialapupu back yes. out there? Um, though he does have a Danny Trejo stash going on right now. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, but just awesome to see him back from, from his injury. And also Lincoln Riley was asked about Zion Branch, Gino Quinones, yes. and Lake McCree. And he said all three of those guys should be back in fall camp. And he said McCree may be a little bit behind just because his injury was so, so late in the season, which is exciting news because we did not know if Lake McCree would be available this season at all or if it was going to be midway through the season he might start coming back. So if he's back in fall camp, that's a big boost to the tight end group because he gives them experience that they do not have at all without him. Um, and then, you know, they're just taking slow, slowly coming back with Zion Branch and Gina Quinones. Zion Branch probably could be out there now, um, but – they don't want to rush anything, want to make sure that he's ready for, for fall camp and said those guys should be ready to go at the beginning of fall camp and we'll see how they can factor into those position battles because they're learning a new defense, right, and they're trying to figure out the offensive line. Those extra practices it wouldn't hurt to be out there for them, so they're going to be a little bit behind and have to play a little bit of catch-up. Absolutely. Final thought for me, some kid – 
outside of practice was asking for autographs with the football when the guys were walking out of the tunnel. It was just cool to see pretty much everyone who the kid asked went over and signed the ball, and that just takes you back to when you were a little boy. I love getting autographs of players. Did you? <laughs> I was always a picture guy before the whole okay. before selfies. So I was like, I can get an autograph at a, at a card show. So One time I tried to get an autograph from Vladimir Guerrero at a Red Sox game, and he said, not today, kid. And I was heartbroken. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm still a big fan of his son. It's okay. You can go get his, his son's autograph yeah. now. That's enough. <laughs> incident analysis. Uh, I'm Connor Morris. Said he's shotgun Spratling. This was incident analysis. Stick with uscfootball.com for full coverage of spring practice throughout the spring camp up until the spring game on April 20th. And we'll see you next time. Next practice on Tuesday, we'll have an incident analysis then.